Hi and welcome to sociology, family sociology, sorry. And now we're going to be looking at another chapter, chapter 8 here. And we're going to do this in two parts. And this is on gray power and the sunset years. Now this is kind of an interesting topic because the whole idea of old age is not at all what it used to be considered anymore. It's because the population is getting older and it's getting to be a bigger uh, proportion of the Canadian population. And so when we think about gray power and about old age, it's taking on a different dimension than it used to take. And we'll go into that in some depth in these two parts. In the first part, we're going to look at what are some of the dimensions of aging. So how do sociologists look at aging now? And we're going to look at what kind of things in terms of lifestyle for older people and the family relationships as people get older. And because people are getting older and older, those family relations are shifting and changing and the dynamics of them change. Even older people themselves are changing dynamic, uh, dy dynamically. And so we're going to look at that in the first one. In the second video, we're going to start looking at um, how does e illness and death affect families. Now, of course, with people getting older, it does mean that more people within a family grouping, you know, extended family and otherwise, will start to you know, get ill and die at times. And so how do different culture, cultural groups uh, deal with aging uh, and death? Not all cultures deal with it the same. We'll go into a little bit of that in part two. And then also, how do the social policies, you know, how does the government um, um, that around these, the, the, the support of people with, who are older, how does the government support and how do families with older members deal with these social policies that exist? Old age security, uh, other means and methods by which you know, older people can look after themselves, and or how does the healthcare system respond to the kinds of needs of older people. So we'll look at that in part two. So in the first, we're going to look at dimensions of aging, and we're going to look at the family relations and the lifestyles of older, of older citizens of Canada. So I hope you enjoy this chapter. It's, I hopefully will give you a more um, up-to-date view of what it is to be an older Canadian uh, today, and the dimensions of the elderly. They're not as limited as they once were, and once as little as even 30 years ago. All right, so let's get on with this, and good luck. So when we think about older age, there's a popular myth about the elderly. And this can be a very misleading element. There is a time clock about becoming older, but it's less clear cut, and it still does exist. Old age is being redefined and rather than there just being one group of people, we used to think that between, you know, over 60 year old. But experts see that there are more like three groups of older aged. Now there is what's called the young old. This would be people between the ages of 65 and 74. Now you might be saying to yourself, young? Well, in regards to old age and the dimension of old age, this would be considered the young old because there are more people who are older and still to varying degrees reasonably healthy. And we have the old, which is the second group, that's the 75 to 84. And then there's the old old, which is the 85 and over people. And so rather than seeing it as a one homogeneous group of older people when the lifespan was quite a bit younger, if you will, uh, than it, you know, 30 to 40 years ago and certainly 50 years ago than it is today, we see this division or dimensions of aging. Now society recognizes several aspects about becoming old. There's the chronological perspective. And now chronological meaning number of years or numbers of years old. So one way that we see becoming old is, you know, how old are you? How many numbers of year? Many people who write about old age use 65 as the starting off mark. In fact, 65 is a relatively new standard. Um, it used to be a younger uh, 60, even 55, and at one point back years ago, it was even 50. And so when we see this sort of chronological perspective about becoming old, that number is getting bigger and bigger. Now there is also a physical standard. You know, how men and women are viewed as they get older. There are gender and class differences in how physical changes are regarded. Some social scientists suggest that old age begins when the physical disabilities begin and set in. Now there is also a psychological um, 
sort of standard, if you will. And this would be the state of mind. You only are as old as you feel is kind of the psychological state of mind. That we believe that aging is a frame of mind. It's, it's difficult to find qualities that are characteristics of most elderly people. You can have some people who feel old at 60 and people who feel quite healthy and young at 80. And so psychologically, that must have a huge, there must be a huge difference in the way people feel about being old. Uh, they show that more differences than similarities as far as younger people do. So we see more similarities in younger people than we see in this broader group of older people. And then there's the social standard. You know, how are we supposed to act? What are the cultural norms about being old? Um, timing of marking events such as, you know, how old should you be when you're a grandparent? And we see that ranging. Um, widowhood, you know, when do, you know, at what point do most people lose a partner of life and become a widow? That's changing. Uh, the year of retirement, we find that certainly 65 is the, you know, standard of retirement, but many people work well beyond that. And so all of these things are changing. All these time markers are changing for the older population. Attitudes towards timing changes, they're not, they're not unanimous. They're not, um, not everyone feels the same about all of these changes. Some adapt to them very easily and very readily and others of them are struggling with it. Now, when we look at these developmental tasks of old age, um, there's a key task for older people is to accept shifts of roles. That is, they're no longer predominantly workers, they're moving into retirement. Now, that's a shifting of roles. And it allows the next generation to take over leadership in the private and the public life. As individuals reflect on their lives, they look for order. They look for meaning in their lives as they look back. Without a sense that, that, that life has been, you know, has been meaningful and has had purpose, people start to sink in some degree of despair. Now despair is a general, is, is a, a term that can have a wide range. It doesn't mean everyone just sort of goes into an abyss, but when people look back and don't see that they've, you know, they've had meaning and purpose in their life, they start to, you know, look for some meaning. If they don't find it, it's a, it's a difficult thing to sort of to deal with as you're getting older. And so, Few differences in adjustment to the old age between, there's not that much difference between being old and homosexual and old and heterosexual for either men or women. Now these developmental tasks, there are three. Independence versus dependence, connectedness versus separateness, and openness versus privateness. Now when we look at independence versus dependence, the main, it, it, it's the, predominantly the ability to remain independent related to both your financial status and your physical status and your mental condition. And so for the older person, having independence is being able to look after yourself mentally, physically, and financially. So home ownership often allows seniors to maintain a degree of their independence. Homeowners significantly are less likely to be institutionalized than those who rent. Living in a nursing home greatly reduces independence. In 2012, 200,000 Canadians, which is relatively few, lived in residences for the aged. Now that's going to start to increase because the uh, boomers are fully into adult or into their elderly years, as well as the lower end of the boomers starting to emerge there, and that's going to, you know, really bust that um, uh, number up quite significantly. So because of the wide range of physical condition of people getting into that 60 years and over, we will find that more people will be in residential care. Um, connect connectedness and separateness, well, there's a struggle for independence often reflects the tension between the desire for connectedness with one another and separateness alone time. So older people value the relationship with their children and grandchildren, yet they also wish to have their own unique lifestyle. And it's a, um, it's a tug of war between the degree of connectedness and separateness and not everybody um, is happy with one or the other. There's a tug between wanting a bit of both. And that holds true for openness for, uh, versus privateness where privacy may become, a precious, uh, may become precious in the face of retirement, widowhood, sickness and institutionalization. Uh, some find it preferable to, obta to obtain care from a stranger than from a, fa a family member. 
if someone is cared for by a relative or a living um, or living in a nursing home private life is virtually impossible so this sort of um, tug of war again between how much openness you know you, you you're getting care from somebody either you know or you don't know in a way that you may not really want because you don't have any privacy to the point of wanting to have more privacy and how do you establish that now the table you're looking at here is looking at pop uh, the proportion of persons who were age 65 and over in the Canadian population ranging from 1956 to the what is predicted to be in 2056 and the population of Canada is becoming older, largely because people are living longer. The oldest members of the baby boom uh, bulge have started to retire and the swelling of the number of seniors. So we're seeing the general population moving from what you would describe as a pyramid, a lot of young people with few old people, where that young people group, the baby boomers that were once the young are now moving up in that pyramid and the pyramid is changing shape to look more like a muffin. Small group of people in the young with a bulging out to the old into this big mushroom or a muffin. The oldest, um, since birth rate is down, fewer uh, young Canadians are um, having children and it's offset with the increase uh, among the elderly. According to Stats Canada, seniors age 65 and older account for a record high 14.8% of the population um, in Canada. That was in 2011, and that was up from 13.7% uh, five years later, or five years earlier, sorry. Uh, in 2011, uh, the census counted 5,825 people aged 100 and older. That was up from 4,635 4, in 2006 and 3,795 in 2001. Of the nearly 5 million seniors aged 65 and over in 2011, over half, about 56.4%, were part of a couple, 24.6% lived alone, and 11% had other arrangements such as living with relatives. The remaining 7.9% lived in nursing homes or residences for senior citizens. Between 2001 and 2011, the proportion of senior women who lived alone declined, while the proportion of senior men living alone remained relatively stable. And so we'll see these things start to adjust more as that senior population grows. Now we can look at a variety of conditions, lifestyle and um, environmental, that affect aging in Canada. And one of them is economic factors. The, the Canadian um, retirement income system is made up of three predominant pillars, if you will. One is government pension plan for those people aged 65 and older. Uh, even if they're not retired, you have access to the guaranteed income supplement if individuals have little or no retirement income. Now, some people will have their own uh, private pensions and that's the third pillar. The second pillar is the Canadian Pension Plan and the Compact Pension Plan, the CPP and QPP. Now payments based on how much an individual contributed over her, his or her lifetime are working. So as you work, if you look at your pay stub for the deductions, one of those deductions that is made from your pay is going to go co towards the CPP and that is your contributions towards your retirement um, Canada Pension Plan that you'll get when you're age 65 or whatever that age will be when you get to that era of your life. And then the third pillar is private pensions and savings. This would be any company that you work for where you can pay into and have your company match your contributions will go towards a pension plan. Um, not every company has that, but most um, professional companies have a pension plan. Georgian College, for example, has a pension plan. Or it might be other savings that you've done like RSS, or R, RSPs, and these would be the third level. Now, not everyone's able to have, a, not everyone has a pension plan or is able to save. And everyone probably will pay if you have a head work where deductions come off that paid towards CPP and everybody will have some access to a government pension plan. So you can see that not everyone will have the same sort of uh, retirement. Still many inequities in pensions exist. Women are most disadvantaged and some of the factors include women are more likely to work part-time. Now that's starting to change. Usually 
Uh, they don't work as many years as men because they're caring for children. Um, more women than men work in service occupations where there's not often very many pensions involved. And women often work less than men, uh, earn less than men, so they have less income going into their CPP. Um, the median uh, retirement age has changed from the early 70s to the early 80s, it was about 65. From 87, the government lowered the minimum age for which someone could draw benefits from 65 to 60. In 2005, it was raised to 61. In 2012, eligibility for your old age security and guaranteed income supplement was increased from 65 to 67. So this all will have an impact on people's experience in their old age, depending upon what you've been able to contribute and save for your own retirement. Now, other elements about what affect um, um, aging in Canada are the activities and the interests that involve in retirement. Retirement usually marks major changes in the kinds of activities that people do. Problem for people who define uh, their value as an individual by their occupations. So for 40, 50 years of your life, you figured out who you were based on all the kinds of jobs that you had and what you did for your job. And now all of a sudden you've got to find other interests and for, for many people, that's a, 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 um, a happy and enjoyable opportunity to pursue hobbies that they've not had time for. For others, there's a real gap between I've had purpose and I've had a job and now I don't. What do I do with my time? Most retirees, however, are happy and busy volunteering, um, involving in activities, some of the uh, substitute uh, activities are recreation, time with friends, caring for others, volunteer work, even for paid work. Uh, working women may not feel as much displacement as men since many continue homemaking just as they did their, their, during their working years. Now when we consider into health and self-care, as people grow older, physical well-being and concerns about possible or actual illness become more important. For those over 75, um, more likely to have a chronic health problem or disability. Most common are things like vision issues, mobility issues, and memory problems. Lower income individuals are at greater risk for illness and death than those with higher incomes. A vast majority of seniors live in private households. Often overlooked are the number of seniors caring for other seniors, whether it be a spouse, a friend, or even a neighbor. Caregiving of seniors often ends when the mental and physical health of the older person makes it very difficult or impossible for family to cope any longer. Whether seniors live on their own home, in their own homes or uh, with children or an institution, family members, especially daughters, feel a duty to provide care. Even if they have other responsibilities such, such as children and or jobs. And so what we've done now is just basically look at, you know, these sort of introductory dimensions and some of the lifestyle issues and family relationship issues as they relate to people getting older. Now, what you can do is then uh, open up and go to your part two version of this and we'll get into the other elements about aging. All right. Well, thank you very much for listening and take it easy. Bye now.